Պարոն Դենիելսոն շնորհակալություն մեր հրավերն ընդունելու համար եւ Սեփանյոսեն նավակում թու արմենիան Thank you for the interview yesterday we got news about our neighboring uh, Georgia finally getting the visa liberalization uh, approved uh, some circles in Armenia were happy and enthusiastic but it's no secret that others uh, had some envy uh, how, does Armenia have a chance to get to the same point to get to visa liberalization and uh, if yes how close are we to such a potential outcome the whole issue of um, people to people contact uh, are essential and um, that is why we have together worked hard over a couple of years in order to put into place the uh, visa facilitation agreement that was reached in 2012 and uh, which we have which we now is uh, seeing entering into force uh, what we should aim for now is to see to that that agreement is being fully utilized uh, it will provide for uh, students uh, youth and business people uh, to much more, much more easy be able to come to come into europe uh, and uh, and that is good uh, I think that is what we should have our eyes on uh, and that is what we should concentrate on. Do I understand your reply correctly that Armenia is far from the type of agreement that Georgia got yesterday? Well, I wouldn't like to do any comparison. We are having one of our the relations is with Armenia and Georgia is, is, uh, is another relation. Uh, I wouldn't compare that. What I'm saying is that we, now we need, I always, I think it's very important to, to focus on, uh, on seeing to that agreements we have reached actually are also used to its utmost. And, uh, and now we have the visa facilitation, let's see to that that one works out well and that becomes substantive and deliver what we have all together agreed it should deliver. Երբ մենք հետևում ենք վիզայի շուրջ քննարկումներին, հատկապես Ուկրաինայի մասով տեսանք։ When there was discussion of uh, Ukraine, we saw that there was some dissatisfaction within the EU, perhaps because of the population size of Ukraine. However, we do see that Ukraine, Moldova and Georgia are getting in a way a different uh, treatment. Do you see the possibility of deepening relations with Armenia, given that Armenia has joined the Eurasian Economic Union, so in a sense Armenia has opted to move in a different direction? Well, our relations now, we are at a very interesting point right now in the sense that uh, we are, uh, we are moving into a new phase. Uh, we are in the, have been in negotiations of a new agreement and uh, which uh, our hope is that we will be able to conclude very soon. That will provide for a substantive deepening and enrichment of our relations in various fields, uh, from uh, governance and uh, working on the, on the reforms of judiciary to issues relating to uh, connectivity uh, transport, energy, energy efficiency, two issues which relate to the economy and how to, uh, to, uh, uh, we can support uh, reforms of the economy in this country, two issues relating to people to people as well. And I'm thinking of issues on uh, how we can strengthen uh, student exchanges and how we can see to that citizens of, of Armenia can draw uh, more benefits out of the cooperation that we have. Yes, uh, two days ago I was speaking with a leader of the ruling Republican Party who told me that the framework agreement with the EU will probably happen after the forthcoming April elections. Does that mean that you're uh, waiting for the outcome of the April election before you uh, take a final decision on this matter? Well, you know, when one negotiates there are two at the table. Uh, from our part, we are ready to conclude negotiations when we have an agreement. And uh, there are issues which, uh, which needs to uh, the time it needs. Uh, our intention is to go forward as soon as possible. Are those issues created or caused by the Armenian side? No, I mean, it's like in any negotiation. Uh, if, we don't, if, if everything would be straightforward, we wouldn't have to sit down and, and discuss it. Uh, so I wouldn't say there is on any, uh, whether that is one side or the other side. Uh, we are determined, both parties, to reach an agreement which is rich and which is uh, deepening our cooperation in, in various fields. 
And uh, you know, that takes time because we need to identify what does it mean in concrete terms. Just to have uh, general language is not very useful. We need to have reflected on, so what, what does it mean? What does it mean when we write down that we should work more together as regards uh, governance, strengthening uh, democratic institutions? Uh, what does it mean when we are saying that we should have a strengthening of cooperation as regards uh, the judiciary and judiciary reforms? And what does it mean when it comes to strengthening our, our relations in the economic field? Uh, standards, uh, uh, how, uh, how goods can more easily uh, be, be traded between uh, Armenia and, and the EU. Before I move to other questions, let me ask one more about the upcoming election. The EU has provided uh, 7 million euros for the administration and transparency of the upcoming election. Um, the public is uh, developing a legitimate question. Does this involvement and funding of yours not limit your ability to be more impartial in any future assessment of the election process and the outcome? That, no, we are going to be very impartial and uh, we are going to follow very closely uh, the election monitoring that is going to happen. Uh, uh, we, our expectation now is that given the, uh, the, involved, the, the, um, uh, the, in, the investment and the assistance that we have given to, uh, to the setting up the right framework for the elections and also getting the physical infrastructure in place, our expectation is that there will be free and fair elections. And that is from that angle that we will observe the, uh, the outcome. I know this visit of yours is a regional visit and it was preceded by visits to Azerbaijan and Georgia. Uh, how would you compare the politics and uh, economics of, of those three South Caucasus countries? Well, firstly, I don't think there is uh, much use in doing a comparison. But uh, what is clear is that uh, all three are striving to, towards having a richer and deeper relation with the European Union. Uh, and that is something which we are also striving for. Uh, so from that angle, uh, we have a similar uh, commitment. Uh, what is also interesting is that uh, all three are, also are part of the Eastern Partnership, which provides for a geographical frame of, uh, of cooperation and uh, I think we ha I had, had interesting discussions here and in the two other countries on uh, what that would mean and in concrete terms uh, we all agreed that uh, we should use that uh, cooperation, Eastern Partnership, in order to look on how we can strengthen the regional element of uh, economic uh, development uh, the regional development when it comes to transport and energy and uh, the regional development when it comes to also experiences of strengthening governance, democratic institution, judiciary and everything comes with a society based on rule of law. And we have also uh, discussed how we can strengthen the people to people component. So from that angle there, is, there are similarities between the three both when it comes to objective and content. For years, the EU has been supporting Armenia in a number of areas, including in the fight against uh, corruption. So has the United States. A couple of days ago, the U.S. ambassador made a statement saying that the efforts against corruption are not, uh, basically are not satisfactory. Now, this combined with the recent uh, publication of Transparency International's Corruption Perception Index which shows that Armenia is down 18 points, are raising some questions uh, um, for, uh, in particular, are you satisfied with uh, the, the efforts that are taken, being taken to fight against corruption uh, on the backdrop of these two, the U.S. Ambassador's statement as well as the Tr Transparency International CPI publication? Well, corruption is, uh, is like a cancer for a society. Uh, it is something which uh, uh, undermines the trust in the society from the citizens. It uh, leads to uh, provision of services uh, for the citizens which are not uh, uh, to the optimal. And it undermines also the economic, uh, uh, the confidence of the, from, the, from the business community in the, in the, in the um, uh, society as such. 
So for all those reasons and many others, it's essential to fight corruption. It's a fundamental element of rule of law to fight corruption. And that is why we have, from our part, uh, invested quite a lot in the assistance we give to, uh, to Armenia uh, to support the efforts that are made in doing exactly that. That is about a impartial, independent and efficient judiciary. That is about having the right legislation when it comes to uh, fighting this, uh, this flu. But it's also about transparency. And uh, e-governance uh, is one element of uh, getting such transparency. But of course the NGO society plays a very important role here in monitoring. And fighting corruption is also about uh, attitudes. Uh, it, it must also come from a sense, uh, more generally, that uh, it's wrong to give or to take that kind of, uh, of um, uh, or, or to, to act in such a way. Uh, so that's where we are, supporting this. And uh, it's clear that in, in this country there is room for improvement. Uh, and, uh, and we hope and expect that uh, the government will uh, put uh, the necessary efforts in trying to address these issues. Uh, we note that there are a corruption campaign underway. And, uh, and this is exactly these kinds of uh, issues that are, are called for. We also note that there are reforms of judiciary and there is an e-governments re e uh, reform underway which uh, we believe are going to have, rightly implemented, are going to have positive effects on the issue of corruption. Um, these uh, activities, these efforts have been there for a long time, for years. Uh, the programs have been there for, for years, but the, the results aren't really tangible and cannot really be, be seen. I just quoted the, the uh, words of the U.S. ambassador. Let me just uh, reiterate or follow up with the question, what are your expectations? Do, do you expect uh, anything of the new government? Do you expect the new government will be able to effectively fight corruption? Well, expectations uh, uh, are improvement, improvements. And um, I think uh, there is very clear reasons for why. Um, citizens uh, and the situation for citizens more generally. But another element, and that's most important, but another element which is essential here is that uh, for the economy to uh, really take out the potential that is here in Armenia, uh, there is uh, corruption uh, needs to be to be uh, to be addressed, uh, and because that will that will will provide for a better environment uh, for the business here in the, in the in Armenia, but also for attracting direct investments. If you look on the lists, uh, but when it comes to uh, um, what uh, investors see as barriers for them to uh, invest in 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 a country. Uh, corruption comes very high. I know you have had and will be having meetings with Armenian uh, officials. How would you evaluate those meetings and what have been your main questions uh, or the main issues that you uh, brought up with the Armenian officials? We have had very good meetings um, and uh, uh, we have a, a common understanding of uh, this new phase in our cooperation. Uh, I must say I'm, uh, I'm uh, impressed by uh, the uh, a clear willingness uh, from those I've talked to to address many of the issues that uh, needs to be addressed, be it in the field of judicial reforms, uh, be it on the issue of uh, transparency and uh, uh, e-governance, uh, and also be it in the area of uh, economic reforms more, more broadly, uh, including education. Uh, and uh, from our part, uh, we are looking very much on how we can come in and support these efforts. Um, we are already doing it. So, for instance, in the economy, we are putting in substantial efforts to uh, support the small and medium-sized enterprises. Uh, thousands of small and medium-sized enterprises uh, have uh, already got uh, support from us in terms of advice on how to uh, better be able to, uh, to uh, 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 take up the potential of the European market. Uh, we are supporting the cooperatives in the rural areas in order to see to that agriculture can uh, spool forward. And in the field of, uh, 
of uh, the whole what we have discussed governance in reality we are we are supporting the reform of the judiciary and the judicial sector i was yesterday at an inauguration of a of a refurnished courthouse essential and we have done the same in the area of uh, e-governance uh, where we are, su are supporting the rollout of uh, e-taxation uh, e uh, uh, various forms of registries uh, but also the e-identity card, which is going to be the basis for on, on which this whole e-governance reform can be can move forward. Just as examples. A final question, uh, in a way it ties back to the beginning of this interview. We're watching these days what's happening in the U.S. and President Donald Trump's new policies, especially of limiting the an entry into the U.S. of citizens of certain Muslim uh, countries. Uh, is this possibly going to have an impact on, on EU's uh, migration policies as well? And at some point, potentially also repercussions or implications for the countries of the South Caucasus in, in, a, in a way similar to the U.S. migration policy evolution. When it comes to the, to the um, EU migration policy, it is presently under uh, uh, full development, in fact, and that is due to the big challenges uh, that are there in, uh, when it comes to the tragedies of Syria and the five million refugees uh, living outside uh, Syria, uh, many of them in the EU. It's about the uh, refugees and migrants uh, coming from, uh, from Africa um, and the tragedies that are related to, uh, to, uh, the, to, to what is happening in that context. Uh, and the, the development of that policy is a European policy development. Uh, and that one is, uh, encompasses both measures internally within the EU, uh, on the area of asylum, on the area of external borders, but also in relation to partners in terms of uh, supporting those countries from which people are leaving because they don't see the possibilities of an economic future, uh, or uh, trying also to, with partners to uh, support um, processes can, that can stop uh, uh, wars, or, uh, or situations which uh, are, are making refugees in the sense of people having to flee war or political perse persecution. So it's a, it's a European policy that is under development. And that one is done in a multilateral context uh, where the efforts done by the United Nations and by the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees and the International Organization for Migration are essential. And of course Armenia is part of that process and uh, Armenia is an important partner in those discussions. So you do not expect the EU's migration policy to become uh, harder, tougher? No, I mean the EU's migration policy is, uh, is uh, I wouldn't use the term harsher or not harsher. Uh, it is a policy that is uh, developed uh, in order to be able to, to uh, uh, meet the challenges that, uh, that the EU is having, but also broadly in the multilateral context. And that is about uh, protection for refugees, um, um, dignity for those uh, who are uh, the, the objects of migration or, ref or, or, or fleeing the countries, and also um, efficient structures within the EU to take up that challenge. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much.